Hey guys, Tom here, and this is Not So Average Builder. I'm so happy to be back at the bench. Last weekend, I caught a sinus infection and an ear infection, and I'm still trying to recover from that. What has been going on? For those that have followed my uh, Instagram, you know that I had to take some time off due to picking up a new job or getting a new job. And that has demanded a majority of my time, unfortunately. Uh, I am becoming a... Uh, a journeyman plumber through a apprenticeship program through a local company in my town. The cool part about this is it, uh, the schooling is for free. It is kind of a lot, but it is, you know, for free. Once I finish it, I will be able to get a job anywhere, pretty much doing anything plumbing related. So that is a plus. I needed to get out of the retail environment that I was in. It just was not doing it for me. My shooting schedule is going to be kind of wacky. So far, we're going to be typically shooting on Saturdays. So I can upload on Wednesdays or have it uploaded and get it out to you for Wednesdays. Towards the end of this job, which ends January 1st, my shooting schedule is going to get even more hectic again. I may not be able to put any videos, so I'm going to try and at least do two a week to have a steady backlog for that time. Enough rambling on though, I'm going to talk about what we're here for. This is a Master Grade Zaku 2. I've already built everything on it ready to go as far as inner frame goes. We are going to work on the armor parts. Now this is a grunt suit and everybody knows a grunt suit needs to look pretty cool. However, I'm going to take this a step further using these two. Now for those that watched my Zaku Warrior video, you know exactly what I'm about to do. And you know exactly what I said if you watched that and you followed the series. I'm going to do this entire kit with that style. I want to give it that rough rolled steel texture. I know I've covered this once before, but for those that want to see it again, I'm not going to make you watch another video. So what you'll need to do is take your basic putty, put it out there. Put your cap back on real quick otherwise you'll mess up and you're going to need a stiff bristle brush i probably should use a bigger one but i don't think i've got one so then what we're going to do is pour a little bit of the extra thin on there i'll probably need another bottle of extra thin before this is all said and done and i probably wouldn't do it on a sheet of paper because that's just going to eat up your uh, extra thin before you can use it. A nice little consistency and you're going to start dabbing it on. And don't do that. Then you let that dry and we'll come back and hit it with some just extra thin and cause that to uh, smooth down. Okay, once that dries, we move on to the next step. And that simply involves taking some high grit sandpaper, in this case 1000, and we're just going to lightly sand the area. You don't want to go too heavy, just enough to take down any rough spots or any high spots that may be there. So for instance, the back side of this was a little rough. And that just takes down any spots that may not look great. To make things look different, uh, there are some parts that I applied it to in pieces, and there are parts that I didn't touch at all. So that way when you get to the final look of the kit, you can see different armor textures. On tanks, it's kind of the same principle. Doing something like that will drastically change the look of your kit. But I'll throw everything on here to kind of show you what it looks like 
right now. Now this is a very time consuming process. It is not a quick process to do just half. I did the right arm, the right leg, the chest, and the head. It took me about an hour and a half, almost two hours. It is very simple to do, but it is just time consuming because you constantly have to keep mixing and remixing more stuff because it evaporates. Now it does say that you can thin this stuff with lacquer thinner. So that's what I started doing because uh, I used a lot of my extra thin and I'm almost out and I had to. Let's talk a little bit about the color scheme on this. Well, before I do that, I do wanna say that I did not coin this technique. This was something that I learned from a fellow YouTuber uh, night shift scale models. I will link his channel in the description below just like I did before, but it is a technique that can kind of give that realistic texture to your kits and really make it pop. I'm like I said, I'm going to do the entire kit on this. There is a piece or two that I will be showcasing in the next video. So I don't know if you can see it or not, but there is a giant, giant seam line running down the center of this. So the next video will be showcasing this, the ceramic scraping tool by Scale Modeler Supply, who's actually the sponsor of this video. And that brings me to my final point before we head it off. We're going to talk about the color scheme on this. So after SMS and I talked for quite a long time, uh, we had kind of decided on together that it was going to be the Zaku. Because who doesn't love a good grunt, especially a Zaku grunt. And he told me that I could pick the color scheme. And I thought, nothing looks cooler than like a Japanese Imperial Navy style Zaku. So it just so happens that they have sent me their Japanese Imperial Navy color set that I can try out on this. You've seen me use SMS paints before. This isn't going to be a how to use it unless you want it to. You can drop a comment down below. But I just want to talk about the color scheme. And then we're going to make this video short. I want to keep it short and sweet. That's what I'm going to try and do. Touch on one good point in future videos and get the point across. Uh, this will probably be my last rambling video just because I don't want to bore you guys. I know like if I watch a YouTube video, I want it to be kind of to the point. Uh, I'll probably get doing live streams soon. Uh, I just got to get a microphone. I have my Rode mic, which is what I'm tethered to right now. But it doesn't work for my computer. I need to get a USB mic and unfortunately that isn't going to happen. The reason why it's not going to happen right away is because you guys helped me with the purchase of my stickers on my Etsy store. I was able to get enough money together and pins are being made as we speak. They will be coming from Wizard Pins. I decided to try them out. They popped up as ads on my uh, Instagram, Facebook, everywhere for so long and I figured what the hell I'll give it a shot and uh it wasn't that bad 100 of them are coming so look for those they'll be going on sale soon for around seven to ten bucks I guess it'll depend on how they look when they get here but that's all I got guys I'm going to show you final shots with uh the two pieces what it looks like before and after and uh yeah we'll go from there bye guys <music> Thank you.